Peter, can you tell us the difference between a simple and a complex carbohydrate? So carbohydrates are a certain class of molecule to be distinguished from fats and proteins. And within that carbohydrate class, we divide them into what we call saccharides, which are the number of rings in the carbon structure that you put together. So a monosaccharide, one saccharide, would be something like glucose or fructose, which is effectively the simplest form of carbohydrate. It's one little ring structure. Um, the second most level of complexity would be a disaccharide. So sucrose would be an example of that, where you have a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule fused together. These get larger and larger and larger as you go. And so when you think about the most complex carbohydrates, these are carbohydrates that have many of these monosaccharides, disaccharides grouped together. Why this is relevant is it has to do with, to some extent, how quickly the body can break these down. So there's a reason why when you drink a sugary drink, like a, you know, a Coca-Cola or something like that, you can really feel that jolt of energy quickly. Because your body doesn't have to spend much time or energy breaking that down into the simplest molecule it needs, which is ultimately glucose or fructose to some extent. When you eat something very complex, you have to break it down from all those, what do we call saccharides, joined together into the simplest constituent form, glucose, to then begin the process of digestion or, more specifically, metabolism. So I'm going to go out for a long swim later this afternoon, and I was thinking that I should take in some carbohydrate. Would I want a simple or would I want a complex? It sounds to me like I want a complex carbohydrate. You know, my personal preference is always to choose a more complex carbohydrate over a simple carbohydrate. The only real advantage to a simple carbohydrate is in what I would call a rescue situation. Now, let me give you a dramatic example of a rescue situation, and then you can decide whether you should ever, as a swimmer athlete, find yourself there. My wife was on an airplane once, and um, they asked if there was somebody who, with a medical background who could uh, help because a patient wasn't responding. They couldn't get a patient to, uh, I'm sorry, a passenger on the airplane to move. And so my wife went and saw the woman and realized that she was probably diabetic and probably had overdosed on her insulin. And now her blood sugar was very, very low. This is a dangerous condition in a diabetic. So the first thing my wife did was ask for a packet of sugar, literally white granule powders, opened the woman's mouth and dumped it on her tongue. Now that's about the simplest thing you can give somebody. But it did the trick. The woman woke up within a minute. They were able to land the plane and get her medical attention. So the only time and place in my mind where you would prefer a simple carbohydrate is if someone is in real trouble and needs energy immediately because there's nothing quicker than that. But Mike, if you're going out to do a swim this afternoon, I would argue you should never let yourself get in that position. And so in that setting, yes, a much more complex carbohydrate will allow you to control your level of blood sugar and provide it to all of your tissues in a sustained fashion so that you never end up in a situation where it's too low or too high. Is this where the glycemic index comes into play? Like foods that are high on the glycemic index, are, are those more simple or are those more complex? Yeah, glycemic index is inversely correlated to complexity of a carbohydrate. So a food that has a very high glycemic index, like watermelon, for example, is a very simple carbohydrate. It's high in very simple or monosaccharides and disaccharides. A food that has a very low glycemic index, conversely, is much more complex. So I want to pick the low glycemic index foods if I happen to use that as a measure for selecting my carbohydrates. That's correct. And what would be an example of some, some good readily available carb or complex carbohydrates that uh, might want to take in? Well, it's important to probably distinguish these between two types of times when you'd be eating. One is at your table and the other is in the water. Um, obviously, if you're sitting down and you have the luxury of you know, having dinner or lunch uh, at your own kitchen table, you have many more options as to what you can do. So examples of really good complex carbohydrates that have a very low glycemic index would be you know, things that are typically brown over white. So brown rice is going to have a lower glycemic index over white rice. Uh, things that are very high in fiber and soluble fibers, so a lot of uh, vegetables that are not particularly sweet, so as opposed to a tomato, more like broccoli. Um, there are starchy vegetables, like potatoes, that we think of as not being sweet, but they actually are quite simple when broken down, so they have a high glycemic index as well. Well, that'll certainly help with the selection process. Thanks a lot.